Ministry of Foreign Affairs has had a productive year in 2014 as it advanced the nation's friendship and maintained international peace while moving ahead its domestic agenda. Foreign Affairs Minister Carlin Rodrigues Burkett observed that as the ministry continued to implement the country's foreign policy, focus was placed on preservation of the country's sovereignty and integrity, maintaining sound relations with neighbors, building new relations, facilitating initiatives towards the achievement of sustained economic development, harnessing the skills of the diaspora, and attending to the needs of Guyanese abroad. In terms of uh, the border matter with Suriname, the border commissions of our two countries uh, met in 2014. Uh, that work is ongoing and we will continue in 2015. Uh, I am pleased with the progress made thus far, but certainly in 2015, we would be able to go even further. Certainly that is the hope of the government of Guyana and of course the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. In terms of Venezuela, as you are aware, uh, following the incident involving the removal of a vessel from Guyana's waters, uh, both the governments of Guyana and Venezuela had agreed to meet uh, to deal with our maritime border issue. Uh, one meeting was held with our uh, technical teams, the technical teams from both uh, countries, that is, um, and unfortunately we haven't made a lot of progress in that area. You will be aware that there has also been a change of the foreign minister in Venezuela and Mr. Rafael Ramirez is now the new foreign minister. I have since written him on this matter asking that we work to have this matter concluded. It is not an easy issue, but I believe that with political will on both sides, we'll be able to resolve this. On the issue of the United Nations Good Officer process, and I should uh, pause here to indicate that there are two different issues. The maritime issue is very different to the second issue, which relates to the controversy which has arisen because of Venezuela's contention that the 1899 award which definitively settled Guyana's borders with Venezuela is null and void. In that case, the, you are aware that the representative of the United Nations Secretary General, uh, Professor Norman Gervin, died. Uh, that was very unfortunate. We have not uh, agreed yet to a replacement of Professor Gervin. But let me indicate that the ministry is in the process of looking at the other options under the Geneva Agreement. With Latin America and the Caribbean along with Chile establishing ties in Guyana, this demonstrates the strategic importance of this country, not only as a bridge between the Caribbean and South America, but also its growing stature in Latin America. The government of Chile has announced the establishment of an embassy here in Guyana. That embassy would be in place in, in 2015. They have already started the groundwork here. We are very happy with this development. Uh, Chile is one of the shining lights in Latin America and the Caribbean. In fact, uh, it is, uh, I was just reading a report that it should attain developed country status within a matter of years. Uh, but Turkey, a member of the G20, um, is also a, a very important partner and we've been working to strengthen the relations with Turkey. In my capacity as chair of uh, the Council of Foreign Relations of, of CARICOM, foreign, relation, foreign and Community Relations, a, a visit was made to Turkey where we had a CARICOM-Turkey dialogue. And the opportunity was also taken there to discuss bilateral matters. Since that visit, a team from the Turkey uh, Development Agency visited Guyana and we've already had the approval of some projects in education, health, and in agriculture. Meanwhile, the CARICOM Canada trade negotiations have not yet concluded, although Guyana has provided all the necessary responses to the Office of Trade Negotiations of CARICOM and is hoping to re-engage with the body to finalize the agreement. Guyana has engaged the International Organization for Migration, IOM, 
and did a survey in which 3,000 persons participated. Following the conclusion of that survey, Cabinet drafted a diaspora strategy and it is envisaged that the strategy is expected to be completed by 2015. In terms of advocacy in the regional and national arenas, the Minister continued to chair the Council of Foreign and Community Relations of CARICOM and CARIFORUM Group on behalf of Guyana and just ended the chairmanship of the CDCC. Guyana uh, fought for a review clause to be included in that agreement and that uh, review was eventually secured. Five years have already passed and the review, uh, a review has been done. In fact, what we have is the EU did a review and in my capacity as chair of the CDCC, I had asked ECLAC to also do a study on the EPA that we received the support of all the other countries of the CC CDCC for the ECLAC study. Those two studies have been completed at this point in time and uh, it is presently engaging, they are presently engaging CARIFORUM's attention. But I can tell you this much as far as a cursory look at the review done by the EU uh, indicates and that is there has been no increase in trade as far as the CARIFORUM and the EU is concerned as a group. What we have actually seen is we haven't been able to make use of certain provisions of the EPA. For example, cultural industries, and you would recall those of you who were there when there were lots of discussions on the EPA, that many of our CARICOM uh, neighbors uh, were very, very interested on the aspect of cultural industries. Um, unfortunately, with the burdensome visa regime of the uh, EU, many of our uh, cultural uh, performers, artists, have not been able to, um, to make use of this um, agreement. It is our belief, too, that unless supply-side constraints are addressed, that the EU CAR Forum agreement will not bring the benefits that we would like to see in our region. However, it is an agreement that has been signed and ratified by several of our countries and we have to work to see how we can make that agreement beneficial to our countries. Another important element that the Ministry has been involved in is looking at the revised Treaty of Shaguramas, where the current issue that is being addressed is protocol on contingent rights and government procurement. And in this regard, Guyana has already put in place the necessary legislation. It is not enough just for Guyana to do it. It has to be something that's done throughout uh, CARICOM. And there are certain issues that have not yet been, have not yet received consensus. And we're hoping that the, the protocol would be completed. It's been uh, under consideration for too long a time. And let me just for the uh, purpose of recollection indicate what this contingent rights is all about. It's basically the rights of the spouse and the dependent of the person that uh, possesses a skill certificate. In other words, if a doctor from Guyana goes to work in Trinidad and Tobago, that there would be certain rights accorded to his wife and to his children. For example, the right to attend primary school. So that is the, those are the contingent rights that we are working on. In terms of UNICER, the Union of South American Nations, a Secretary General was appointed in the person of Ernesto Samper, former President of Colombia. Already, he has worked with the Council of Delegates to identify the priorities, some of which include South American citizenship and youth participation, among others. Guyana has pushed for infrastructural development, which include paving of the road from Brazil to Guyana, and the Quarantine River Bridge as a critical component in this regard. Uh, we're very happy that in the priorities identified, and there are seven uh, priorities in the infrastructural areas, that one of those is the uh, paving of the road from uh, Brazil to Guyana. And so in the long, long list that was shortened, uh, we are present there. And there's also a second project involving Guyana, um, the, the Quarantine River bridge um, and also the, well actually a third, uh, there's a third road project that uh, we certainly would, would look at. Guyana also continued its advocacy on the Security Council reform. 
the erection of the permanent memorial to the United Nations to honor the victims of slavery and the promotion of the low carbon development strategy. The ministry will also continue to collaborate with countries on the Ebola virus. There was uh, quite a lot of panic and, and hype on this and, and it has uh, petered out a bit, but it's very much, uh, Ebola is very much present and we have contributed 50,000 US dollars to the UN effort and we will continue uh, to work with, with other countries in, in this respect. Guyana was selected to serve on the Commission on Status of Women for the period 2014 to 2018 and is a member of the International Renewable Energy Agency. It also continued to serve on the Commonwealth Ministerial Action Group, the United Nations Children's Fund, which will end in 2015, and the Program Cooperation Board for HIV and AIDS. This year we were elected to serve on the Commission on the Status of Women for the period 2014 to 2018. We're very proud in what we've been able to do in terms of uh, women's uh, development and representation in Guyana, and we think we have some stories to share. Uh, but we also know we have a far way to go and we would be able to, to learn more um, as we sit on the Commission on the Status of Women. We are also now a member of the International Renewable a Energy Agency, IRENA. Uh, we have uh, ratified uh, that agreement and we are also now a member of the International Atomic Energy Agency. Um, we have been ratified that agreement as well. I mentioned these because these were done in 2014. Since the establishment of the Consul General's office in Barbados, Guyana's relations with that country have been developed and currently five Barbadians are in Guyana studying at the Guyana School of Agriculture. Consultations were also held with stakeholders on the development of hydropower in the upper and lower Mazaruni areas. Minister Rodrigues Burkett announced that feasibility studies are ongoing and Guyana is working on a treaty with Brazil in this regard. It's one way of having people to people uh, contact. Uh, some Vincentians are, seen, are also here. They are studying in the areas of animal health and veterinary public health for two years. Uh, we have received quite a lot of assistance from many countries in the world and we have to look at what we do well to and what we can uh, could give back and this is one way, small as it is, but we believe that it, it helps in the, uh, developing the people-to-people -people, uh, contact in the region. In terms of remigration, 286 persons were issued remigrant status in 2014, while 306 were approved in 2013. The minister made it clear that the ministry is responsible for determining remigrant status, while the Guyana Revenue Authority is responsible for administering tax exemptions. Meanwhile, Trinidad and Tobago has revealed that from 2010 to October 2014, 734 Guyanese were deported from the Twin Island Republic. Minister Rodrigues Burkett noted that this does not augur well for Guyana and the ministry has since requested more detailed statistics on the issue.